here. So this tells you how X1 affects the output of interest, right? There's only one output, which is the rate data. And so this plot here is telling you how does the, let's say, ethylene concentration affect uh, polymer rate, okay? This one is telling you, I have to believe I think this is true. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if I have the order right. This is rate, oh, okay. All right, so the idea here is if you increase the amount of um, ethylene, you'll get more polymer. I think this is propylene, and maybe when you increase propylene, you decrease that. That's why the rate goes down. I'm trying to figure out why the slopes are positive or negative, but I don't want to do too much of that because you guys don't know enough about polymer reaction <laughs> engineering to know what I'm talking about. But these, if I figured out what the inputs were, I'd see that all makes sense. But this says first input has a positive. You increase the first input, it'll increase the polymerization rate. Second input decreases it. They all have different slopes. And these guys here are the 95% confidence intervals on these slopes, okay? So that tells you, man, I'm not that confident, <laughs> okay? At least that's what it tells me. So it tells me, I'm not sure if, if the, this is the real relationship or it might be anywhere in this range here, okay? So obviously the more data you got, the, the more these red lines would shrink and get closer to the, gr the green line, right? This is, this is your regret, this is like, you know, when you regress slope and intercept and calculate the 95% confidence levels, these are like the plots of the 95% um, confidence levels, if you will, or confidence intervals, I should say. Okay? All right. And so, and this tells you, this again is a scaled value, but this tells you the 95% confidence prediction. It's not that great. Okay? It says, I think that Y1, which is the polymer rate, because that's the only one I'm dealing with, is 5.1. But the 95% confidence intervals are, it might be as high as 10 or as low as zero. Remember, this is scaled, so zero doesn't mean no polymer, it just means, okay. But it's a pretty wide confidence interval, okay. Now you can do stuff like, um, say, you know, you can come down here and you can, you see this, lot, this dotted line is right at zero? That's because this number is zero. So you could try, you could say, what happens if that guy's two? That guy is minus one, that guy is zero, that guy is one. You get the idea? You can come in and change, ah, please change, whatever. And then you see it changed the prediction. Let's see if I can do that. No. Um, you see it's now 15. So you can predict what you think the output will be. The polymer rate is a function of these inputs. You can just type in new numbers for whatever you would like, okay? So like if I change this number back to zero, you see it decreases that prediction of what you think that number will be. Okay. Now, you can also um, decide that you don't think a linear model is sufficient for this. So let me go back and change these all back to zero. Okay, so that's what we started with. So now you, could, you can choose any model you want. When you first open it up, it assumes a linear model, okay? But you might say, maybe I could do better if I have a interaction model, right? That's the one that has terms like x1 times x2, x3 times x4, x, all the possible bilinear combinations of the inputs. So you can choose that and then it automatically creates a model. You notice those confidence intervals seem to have gotten smaller, okay? That's because in the real physical system, there are interactions between the inputs, like if you increase uh, the, if you increase at the same time the amount of ethylene and the catalyst, it has a synergistic effect. It's not linear, okay? So you see you do a, bit, a little bit better job um, by including interactions in the model. And again, you could, then you get a certain prediction. You see that, you can see the confidence interval now is a lot smaller, right? You remember this used to be about this number, but it was like between zero and 10, and now at least it's plus or minus two and a half. So the confidence interval kind of shrunk by half. That's a good sign that the real data probably is not linear and it has some nonlinear characteristic to it, okay? So that's good. And then again, you could, now that you have this new model, you could go in here and, you know, change any number you want here and see what its effect on the polymer rate would be according to this model, okay? The model is only as good as the data you put into it, obviously. Um, and you could predict, you could also do a full quadratic, so there's a pure quadratic, that just means linear plus quadratic, interactions means linear plus interaction, full quadratic means 
linear interaction and quadratic. It's like the equation I showed you. Um, and so, is this better? I don't, I don't know. But you see, it predicts, for example, that some of these variables have a noticeable curvature, like this one, right? That's not a straight line. <coughs> so it's a very, oh, looks like my computer wants to reboot soon. You know this thing? It's torturesome. It appears, and if you don't keep track of it, you always do this. You wish it had something like 73 days, but that's not an option. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> so anyway, this regression tool is highly flexible, okay? <laughs> See what I mean? Tricked me. <laughs> Hold on. I'll regroup. Oh, it's going to reboot itself. How nice. I guess you, everyone saw me hit the wrong button, huh? Because there was a reaction before I noticed anything. Oh, good. Now we can install some updates. All right, let's see how quickly I can regroup. No. Sure. Now I get all this crap. You ever do this? You download something that says it's free. You're like, great, I love free stuff. And then all of a sudden you got all this stupid stuff. You're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> okay, I got this picture of some baby on my desktop now. <laughs> um. All right, let's try this all again. This won't take long. That's my theory at least. Okay, did that, right? We liked it. And then I created an x vector, and that was that. And then we created a y vector, and that was that. And then we did this RS tool, like that. Ha, <laughs> suckers, look at that. All right. Um, all right. And so you can do this, um, you know, you can play around with what type of model fits the data best. Um, you, can, you can vary the inputs to see, you know, what effect that might have. On, you could do this for all four of the outputs. If you did that, it would have, it would be too complex, but it would be 16 different plots, actually 20 different plots, four outputs, five inputs. It'd be a little hard to deal with, so I didn't bother doing it. Um, and then let's say you can hit this export command, okay? So if you hit this command export, then it tells you, see, look at this little man. <laughs> <laughs> I have reason to believe he's the legal representative of that baby, but I'm not, <laughs> not entirely sure. All right. So you, if you hit this command, so if you want to use the regression model elsewhere, you need those coefficients, right? So what this allows you to do is download those from this, this tool and it puts them in the workspace so you could use those coefficients to do other things. So for example, if we do this, I'm going to have to explain these things later. This is a measure of how good the model is, this root mean square error and these residuals, which I won't bother explaining right now. In fact, I will only not explain them. I won't download them. But I'll download this thing called beta, okay? And so when we go into the workspace now, we'll see there's now something called beta up there. So first of all, we're obsessed with size of any vector or matrix, so we always do this to see what we're up against. Okay, there's six of them. So, why six? Because if you were to go back, <laughs> of course I lost that too, but anyway. If you go back to this regression modeling that I put up there, so we have a model that looks like the first one, except there's five inputs, right? So there's also an X3 and an X4. So there's beta 1, 0, 1, there's five, there's six betas, right? There's four betas now. If you have two more inputs, there'll be two more betas. That's why there's two, that's why this vector has six values. Because there's a constant term and then five linear terms involving all the five inputs. And then you could just take a look at it if you like, okay? So if you look at this, you, you have to look at the notes. Like if you want to know which beta represents what, you, you should probably type help RS tool and it will tell you exactly, but I happen to know. And so if we look at these coefficients, this is the constant coefficient. 
This is the coefficient that multiplies x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. Okay? And so um, I think this is a really nice tool, and we give you a little bit of a chance to use it when you guys do the, you do the MATLAB homework that's due on Wednesday. Um, there's a little part of that that involves using this tool. And this data set that I just showed you, you're going to use. You'll, you'll see when you, read the, when you read the description. All right. So I would encourage everyone to play around with the RS tool for the next four minutes. Um, but if you have any questions or you want to fool around with it or you just like to leave, it's up to you. Okay. But I'll have your second, or th yeah, second homework back tomorrow. Thank you.